Linda Winter. I'm Martelli's Education Director, and I've also started my own line of templates. When we look at this, you can, might be able to see Winter Designs. The Martellis have encouraged me to come out with my own line of templates because I want to do some specialty things. As you might be able to tell, I've got a template that makes bibs. So I want to talk about bibs, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. So this bib on my little bear here has Velcro on the back side. But the big thing is it's minky. And the problem with minky is when a baby spits up, when they drool, when they do whatever it is that they do, all that stuff rolls right off. So as much as minky might feel good and might look good, it's for the body, not for the mouth. So that's the first thing about our fabric choices. We'll talk about how this works. It does work with minky, but we're not gonna do minky on the front. The other thing I wanted to do when I made up this template design for my bib was I avoided this neck for a couple reasons. One, I've got mothers that have told me Velcro, just like you see here, it snags. It snags so good that it's ripped this part off. It also snags your clothes in the washer and dryer, and it just doesn't last. The other type of bib closure they have is snaps. And again, my mothers have told me snaps don't work real well either. So I've avoided it completely. What I've done is I've made a template that avoids that process for the neck. One of the reasons I made that an option was that when you stitch this up, this is a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster to stitch than something that has the neck. So when you've got that neck, turning the neck, turning the collar, having to figure out what to do up here with that other style is just a mess. The one thing my mother's told me that I've heard over and over and over again was if you're going to make me one bib, make me ten. Because I really love to have ten, not just one. So the mother suggested ribbon. Now the idea of a ribbon, since I'm not a mother, was not one of those things that I thought was so great. Karen, who's videotaping me right now, said, yeah, ribbon's good because as your child grows, you can tie this to different lengths. So I'm going to show you this, but I also want to talk about my great idea. So Karen, if you would pan up to me, and I'm gonna put my name tag on. So three in the morning, I wasn't wearing my name tag, but it hit me. This elastic is kind of what a baby does. So if I took elastic and put it up closer to the neck and changed the idea, this babies are gonna do. Babies won't know to get it off, to go out and to go over and to remove. So let me show you what I did. All right, so we're gonna go look at my first option, elastic. Elastic on the neck. This is a good stretchable elastic, and this is actually a headband from the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, they all have this stuff. So they sell them as headbands, they also sell it by the yard, they sell it in packages, so elastic. When you stitch here and stitch here, that's gonna make this adjustable. Now, if you make it too big, which I suspect this one is, right here, because this, I don't have a baby to be able to test it out on. You can, when you put this on, just put a little clip here, or you can tie it in a knot, and then as the baby grows, then it will actually fit them better. You just have to know how much you need to pull over your baby's head and how much they mind you pulling over their head. But elastic to me is a much better solution than this. Now, some of you, a lot of you, if you've made bibs, have done the binding. I don't really like binding for a couple reasons. One, I have to buy the binding, or I have to make the binding. Two, I have to put the binding on. If I'm making 10, not just one, that takes time. So I'm gonna tell you, avoid that. So I wanna go through a couple of my samples that you can see, and then we're gonna take a look at how the template works. Here's one, if you've done quilt as you go, this with the fabric on the back side, I've got batting on the inside, and you've got a nice piece of elastic here. This is again, a headband. So it doesn't have to just be elastic. Elastic in that old white style that we have done with our underwear and our pants and all that stuff, it doesn't exist. I mean, it does exist, but as far as this goes, it doesn't exist. Get some pretty stuff that matches. So this little bib here, same style as what you're seeing here, but it just gives you a different look. So we've got the ribbon, we've got the elastic. This style, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later. This is what I was talking about before when you're turning this. If you have this and you go to stitch this right sides together, you're gonna to maybe get puckers. This takes more time. And again, you've got the Velcro or you've got the snaps. So I'm gonna show you how to get this style with the same template if you want to do this. 
And then we'll talk about pockets. And then I've got one other surprise that you can do with the template. So let me get my bear out of the way and let's take a look at the template itself. All right, so my get a grip. Can you see how my fabric is staying with the template? I've got a template that's got my fabric on the fold and the scraps. When I go to cut, I need my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. When I go to cut, I'm gonna cut and move the template as I go. So there are a couple ways to cut with the rotary cutter and the templates. This material on the back, by the way, is our get a grip. If you think acrylics that are see-through or templates that you've made, you printed on, um, on your computer or you've made out of mylar or cardstock or file folders or whatever, they do this. Plus those other ones are cuttable. With this thing, look, you see what I'm doing here? That's not gonna damage this and it's not gonna damage my blade either. And oh, by the way, you can use the Martelli rotary cutter, but you can also use other rotary cutters too. So if you don't own the Martelli rotary cutter, I'm gonna tell you to go watch the videos and then go buy one. But if you already own one and you don't want to invest in anything else but my template, then you can use somebody else's. So I placed my fabric in half, I folded it, and then my template is right along that fold. When I go to cut, I mentioned there are a couple different ways to cut. One, I can cut following along as I go, moving the template. Now when I get to here, I'm gonna move it and I just continue to cut, moving that template. And then I double check to see if there's any place I missed. I started right here, so I'm gonna go back and finish that off and now let's talk about how to do the neck. When you do a little curve like this, you've got an issue because rotary cutters do really well on the outside but not on the inside. So when you go to cut, we're gonna cut and normally I tell you always to keep your blade nice straight up and down, not at an angle. But here we are gonna cut at an angle. I'm gonna cut inside. Now maybe I have success with that and maybe I don't. Can you see how I'm part way there? So I'm gonna continue on. What you can do is if you get halfway and you decide you're not comfortable, then you can go back this way and cut that way. The other thing you can do is just take a good old fashioned pen. Let's just make this a little bit further down and take a pen and you can draw a line and then use scissors or your rotary cutter, depending on how comfortable you are with cutting. So here's the bib that I got. That's what I've got there. So I take my first side, I take my second side, and then you do the traditional pin or clip. If you know our zip guns, then use the zip gun. If you don't know the zip guns, then go watch my video on the zip guns. So I'm gonna grab some elastic. All right, I wanna show you some of the elastic. I'm sorry about the noise. But let's take a look at some of the elastics. These are things from, again, all those different stores that you all probably go to. Headbands, more headbands, more headbands, more headbands, more headbands. These look like they're rough, but they're really soft. And I think these would be really cute. You don't wanna pick something that's gonna scratch that baby's neck because it's gonna be around their neck and we want them leaving it on, not pulling like crazy. This is, again, another headband. Here's the same type, but in a different color. That's the same as the aqua one that I had before. So let's talk about not headbands. This is from Joann's. They've got it in their, I think it's Babyville section, in their baby section, and you get two of these for $6.99. Imagine this coming like that. But this is soft and it's cute, and I think it would go great with a bunch of different um, examples. I'm gonna grab this. Here's a headband. You can see here we've got more headbands. These guys are the elastics. The problem with this is there's a piece of elastic in here. If you like the look of this, the reason I'm showing this is make your own. Grab some fabric, sew a tube, put a piece of elastic inside of there, stitch on one side, really stitch down and then pull it and then gather. And then basically this would be one end You'd cut here. I should have this already as an example for you, but I didn't. But imagine making your own tube. So you've got those. The other thing, and this is much thicker, but it just depends on your baby and how old they are and um, how much they don't mind things on their neck. But these are those little headbands. If you've got headbands and you don't have anything else, then you can use that too. These are some headbands that I got. The problem is they are very stiff and they're thicker. This one doesn't have a lot of texture, but some of these, I had one, this. This has texture to it. It's rolled. You don't want to get the roll. It's hard to sew, but I also think this is going to bother a baby's neck too. So it's just difficult to work with. So I'm going to get these out of the way. Let's grab, oh, let's see. I think I'm going to do this rather than this one. So let's grab that. And we're going to look for where it's been kind of glued together. So we're just going to cut. I'm going to 
pull that out of here. Wrong way. And let's throw these on the ground. Of course, just like my house. But it's Karen's living room. Thank you very much. <laughs> so what are we going to do? You need to decide how much you need. So if you're not sure, go grab one of your baby's bibs. If you're making this for somebody else, maybe you have a bib that you've already made for them. And you want to kind of estimate. Um, the idea is we're going to put this inside. If you're not sure, you can always stitch one end down. So to here, so to here. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then just leave this end sticking out. So I'm going to place this inside and you would pin this down. I'm not going to do that because you'll get the idea. So this is going to go right to, if I can get my fingers to work, this would basically go here. And again, you decide on the length. If you're not sure, then you can just leave it and deal with that later. Make sure that this isn't twisted too when you're placing this inside of here. So again, we're going to pretend that that has been all done nice and neat and then we would stitch around. When you stitch around you want to leave yourself an opening. I like leaving an opening on the side rather than on the bottom. If you leave an opening on the bottom the problem is this kind of has a curve. This is like this and then there's a curve. You're better off to do a straight edge here. People won't notice that as much. It's closer to their underarms anyway so that won't show as much. So that's kind of your basic idea for the baby bib. So I'm going to get that out of the way. Actually, I want to talk about one more thing. Flannel, flannel. Flannel, cotton, terry, all kinds of fabrics. Towels. These are from Dollar Tree. It's that stuff that's wipeable. Here's an actual towel. It might be um, a burp cloth. It might be a diaper. There are all kinds of material choices. What you don't want to do is have something that is going to have everything roll off the front. For instance, oil cloth. Oil cloth, laminated fabric, this is really great. On the back, not on the front. So imagine this is on the back side. On the front, why? Because everything's going to roll down. Later on, we'll look at this one that has a pocket. So if you're going to do the pocket, we'll talk about that. But for now, on the front side, we want something that will absorb. Decide again if you want to put something in the middle or if you're going to have that back be really absorbent. So know the baby stage that they're at whether it's just food that's coming out or whether it's gooey, glucky food. So you make the decision. This is the standard size of the bib, but I wanna show you how to do a little bit larger and a little bit smaller. So it's easy to do smaller, very easy. The idea is we're gonna use our mat. I'm gonna look at my blue line here and my dark blue line. So I'm gonna use this template and I'm gonna place it on the dark blue line. Looking at this fabric here on the light blue line, place that on there and then I'll place this on that darker line. And what that's going to do is it gives me, that's a half of an inch, so it's going to give me an inch narrower. Now we want to cut, when we cut right to about here, we stop instead of going all the way. I'll go ahead and do it. Actually, I'm going to go from here. We're going to go from the top and right about here, I want to stop. I'm going to look at my mat and I'll kind of line up, let me cut this all the way here. And do you see how I'm placing this on the blue line right here? There's no exact science to this. This is just a bib after all, it's gonna be spit on and all kinds of stuff. But what I wanna do is lift this template up. And when I lift this up, I'm scooting it up. So what I've done is I just made it shorter. You might be able to see up here. So I'm making it narrower and I make it shorter. So imagine I go ahead and finish that off. So that's gonna make a smaller bib. Well, I'll go ahead and do this so you can see the size. Oh, and I do, on the next one, I'm gonna show you my second way that I like to cut the templates. So this gives me here the ability now to go back and do my neck. So what I'm doing is I'm lining this up to where I was before. And again, there's not, you know, the the need to have it to be perfect, but you get the idea. So again, I'm turning that angle, just angled a little bit. All right, so here's the size. And later on, what I'll do is I'll compare this size to the standard size to the larger size that we're gonna do next. All right, so the larger size, kind of the same concept. I'm gonna use my mat, but now what I'm gonna do is decide, do I want an inch wider? Do I want it, do you see here how I'm doing? That's an inch, that's gonna give me two inches wider if I get that lined up right. So you decide how much wider you want it to be. So I'm gonna do basically to the edge of the fabric because I don't have a whole lot more. 
So when I go to cut, this is going to give me more width. All right, so I'm going to show you one way that you can cut with this. So we're going to cut here. Notice what I did. Instead of following the edge, I cut off. I call this cutting off. I'm just following, kind of going in there. I went straight. Here I'm going to cut off. I'm not trying to go around the edge. If you're not comfortable with going around the edge, turning the template, just cut off and then move the template. And then when I've got that straight, I can do. So what that allows me to do is make it wider. Now, I really wanted to show you longer as well. So we'll do that on the next one. So what that's going to do is make it wider. We continue to do the neck there. I'm going to throw that one aside for a minute and grab another one. So we'll make this again wider. Now that we have the idea of, instead of cutting this way, moving as we go, again, cut off and then move, cut, cut off. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So we're gonna do this down, all the way down at the bottom. And I actually am gonna turn it this way because with me being left-handed, I wanna start from the bottom instead. Right-handers versus left-handers. You right-handers, I apologize for cutting left-handed, but now you know what it's like for the rest of us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to cut. Right here, I'm going to end up bringing it up a little bit, but that's made it wider. Let's go here, and I'm going to go ahead and cut, and then cut, and then cut. All right, so when I want to make this taller as well, I'm going to bring this up. And I don't want to go past the edge of my fabric. And you'll notice I've um, cut my fabrics into smaller pieces rather than just dealing with all the bulk. So it's just easier to manipulate. So we'll cut. And then again, we'll do the neck. And when you do the neck here, I basically just kind of see what I'm doing there. If you decide you don't like the wideness of the neck here, you can then scoot the template in. See how I've done that? So you decide, take one of your baby's bibs and decide what it is you like. If you want a wider neck, leave it where it was. I'm making that neck a little bit narrower. So you just decide. And again, I'm going right inside, turning that, angling that. You'll get more comfortable with cutting this with the rotary cutter. All right, have I cut that? Almost. All right, so I'm gonna grab the first one, my second one, my third one. Here's the largest. Can I find them all? Oh, there's this one. That's the largest. This is the average size. And then here's the smaller size. It's harder to see because I've got pink on pink. I'll turn it over so maybe it's a little bit easier to see. But do you see how with the same template you can do three different sizes? So you like the idea of the sizes, but you maybe don't like the shape. So let me show you how to change the shape. This bib right here, all right? So you like this style. This, by the way, P-U-L. P-U-L is fabric that they have at Joann's. They've got it online. They've got it all over the place. It's wipeable. This is not on the front, that goes on, my recommendation anyway, the back. This is flannel, so flannel is going to absorb that fabric from the baby, or the, the food and the, all that stuff from the baby. And then this protects their clothing. Because we want not to have to do more laundry. That's, at least I think as a mother, I wouldn't want to have to do more laundry. So this concept is what we want to do with this same template here. So this is what it's going to end up looking like. It's a little bit different in shape. What I've done is I've used this center. You get the idea of this here. You can see basically, we'll talk about how we did that. So we'll take a look at that. So I grab some fabric. Now, if you're gonna make that style, you can decide if you want it to be the same size or if you want it to be bigger, whatever it is. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just for practicality's sake. All right, so again, I'm cutting, I'm doing the cut off rather than following along. And hopefully that'll make sense. I have written directions that will show you how to do that. All right, so what I've done is I've cut and I've rounded off one edge. We're gonna flip. I want this same um, angle on the other right end. So we're gonna flip this over. I'm gonna line up the edges here. And again, you decide on the length. I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of the amount of fabric because Karen tells me longer is better. So we're gonna go ahead and cut off. 
and then cut off and cut off and cut off. All right, so what have we done? We've created something that looks like this. You're saying that's not the bib. Well, kind of. That's kind of what I've got here. You can see I've made it a little bit longer. So what do we do? Peanut butter jar. Where is it? <laughs> okay, so take something like this. And with the pen, not our rotary cutter, but with the pen, we're gonna trace around. And you decide how big that hole is. Again, you can take a bib. Here's what I did. You can see here, you get the idea. Now remember, you've got a seam allowance inside of there. So we don't wanna make this huge hole for that neck. But the idea is with here, I'm gonna turn it this way so you all can see. Do you see this amount right here? We're gonna be cutting that like on this one here. But I still need to have fabric here that's going to have a seam allowance here and a seam allowance here. So with the pen, you do your marks. And then for the next piece, instead of tracing that, and I don't have a pen, so I apologize for not having that organized, but imagine that this has this cutout in there. So what you would do is take the one that already has the cutout, And with your other piece that hasn't been cut out, whoops, we're gonna do this. And then you just pin all the way around. We go to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch here. We're gonna stitch all the way around. I don't even need to do anything to this one. I just stitch around following this pattern. This is my pattern basically. And I stitch a circle here. And then up here, I'm basically gonna stitch over like this and over like this. So we're basically where I've got my hole. Let's put this back, it might help. So where my fold is, that's my middle. I'm gonna stitch basically right here. And again, I apologize for not having this together, but I don't know how many of you are really gonna do it, but I want you to have the option. So we would stitch here and we would stitch here because we're gonna be cutting here. And we would be stitching around here. And that turns into this. Then you decide, do you wanna do the Velcro? Do you wanna do the snap? Whatever it is that you wanna do. I like to do a top stitching on most of mine just because I think it gives a nice little, I don't know, a, a, just a little bit more of a professional look. If you're going to be making a whole bunch of these, you just decide whether you want to do that or not. But that's one way for you to do something that's a more traditional bib. If you're going to make one, that's a great option. But if you're making 10, go with the original. All right, so this is the next bib that I want to show you. This I got from the store. And this right here doesn't have any of this lamination on here. And Karen tells me these get really stinky, dirty, filthy. So the idea is for this to be like this. So this side here, this has a binding, by the way, which I'm gonna skip completely, because again, it better be good, it better be fast is my motto. So what have I done? I made a much bigger one. And inside of here, this piece was on the fold. I added a pleat here, a pleat here, raw edge all the way around. You can notice this I've stitched here. There's no finish here. It doesn't need to be finished. This thing is gonna be wiped off. At the end of each day, you wipe that off, you hang it. Maybe later on you decide to throw it in the washer and dryer or the dishwasher, it doesn't really matter. But this, because it's wipeable, I don't have to worry about this getting all stinky. This is gonna be on the baby's chest, so none of that food, anything is gonna get through to the baby, so we're good with that. And again, I've used a headband here. Now what I did with this one was I stitched it on. I did a lot of stitching here, but you might just do a row of stitches here. And then as the baby grows, because I've left this extra here, you can decide if you wanna cut this off or if you wanna make it a little bit longer. Totally up to you. Um, you'll have to let me know. I would love to hear what you all think. Those of you that actually have babies or give these to people with babies, I'd love to get feedback on how this elastic works for you. So the idea of this being this. So why did I do the pleats? Because Karen told me yesterday when we were out with her child that this, with the regular bibs, it doesn't stick out enough so that food ends up just kind of going out. So make a, a pleat and a pleat so that it becomes a pocket that sits out so that food can actually catch in there. So when she's eating the um, goldfish, and what else, Cheerios? So when she's eating the goldfish and the Cheerios, then it actually goes in there. You can just wipe it all off. Okay, one last project, that's this. 
this is this. This is what I just did, except no neck with the peanut butter jar cut out. Now, I don't recommend you do this as your first project, but this is something that a friend of mine, Carolyn, did. And I've got bags in here, stuffing, but you can see we've got some great little lining fabric. Do a big zipper with a nice zipper pull on here or some kind of attractive thing. And the idea is that this can be a cute little backpack or a cute little bag for your little girl when she's no longer a baby, but when she's ready to carry her own. And add some extra pockets. Whoops. So there's from my booth. So this, you got a pocket, you got a pocket. You decide if you want to do stabilizer, if you're going to make this stiff. So, but the idea is it's the same template. So this template. This is the baby bib, the baby bib that allows you to do a bunch of other things. One of my ideas with this that I haven't done yet, this with a wing and a wing. This is black fabric. Right here you've got a funny little grin, you got a tooth, that's a bang, and the little drips of blood, and it's a vampire bat for Halloween. So you got the wing here and the wing here. I hope somebody will make it and send me a picture. I would love to see it. So winterdesigns.com, I have these available. You can call me as well. You'll see a link to my website. You'll see a link to my Facebook. I've done nothing on Facebook. Karen's going to do my Facebook, or at least get me started. So please go like me. Um, I'm going to learn to be social. I'm not real good at it, but Karen's going to do that for me, hopefully. And um, you can purchase from there. You can purchase from my website. You can purchase by calling me. You can email me. You'll see all my contact information. And again, I would love to see pictures. If you send me pictures of anything you do, I'll give you a 10% discount on your next purchase. If you send me pictures and a testimonial, I'll give you 15%. If you're a cheapskate like me and the discount um, motivates you, then definitely let me know. Oh, one other thing. This guy here, that laminated stuff, do you see how this grabs? What I love about the get -a grip that's why I created my own line, is that it grabs all your materials. So when you're going to cut something like this, Think about what you've been doing. You're using something else that's sliding all over the place. Those acrylic rulers, this guy grabs. So it works so wonderfully. That get a grip material, um, what do I say? No slipping, no kidding. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Karen, for filming. And hopefully this will turn out well.